Today I want to talk about uh, languages, uh, specifically compiled versus interpreted languages. Uh, you see, the goal of writing code is eventually to end up with uh, machine code that is directly executable by the CPU to which this program was executed or compiled against. Uh, so if all of us knew how to, sorry about that, if all of us knew how to program in machine code directly, uh, none of the languages, and there was no barriers at all, and uh, none of the languages were existed. Languages existed mostly for ease of use and, um, you know, to remove the barrier of entry because writing machine level code is so complex. Plus, there are a lot of CPUs, different machine code, different heat level and structure per CPU. So, languages are useful, needed. But if there was this didn't exist, we wouldn't need languages. So the goal of all the languages that we build and write code against is uh, is to get that machine code which executes the instructions, the code that we authored. So that's the goal. And uh, for the longest time, we only had one uh, way of doing that. And uh, I'm going to skip uh, perhaps a uh, it's, it's an honorable mention to mention assembly, which is the closest almost one-to-one -one, uh, universal language that works on any CPU. So you learn assembly, and if I give you an instruction, that instruction uh, will work on all, all other CPUs if you compile it to the machine language. So that's the closest level, but it's very hard to get right. Right, because there you need to do so many work to do so simple things. But then uh, a high-level language were invented uh, to simplify this even further, right? To allow us to do complex things that are not really easily to uh, doable. And that's C. Right? Of course, I'm not going to go to history because I don't really. I'm not really interested in the history first place, and I don't really know it. But C is one of the first languages that are compiled. So you learn, uh, you learn C, and you learn how to write in C, and eventually you write certain code. I want to add two numbers. You define these concepts of variables, and data types, and whatnot, and and. The language tells you how to allocate memory, you know, deal with uh, arithmetic operations, and tells you like, hey, this plus sign, this is actually, it doesn't exist, right? It's just, it's just a symbol that the language created. And that gets, when you compile it, gets translated to a specific machine code that means addition, right? So that's what this is all about. So compiling a language, will generate a machine code binary that executes natively, directly on that CPU. A very powerful, that as, it's as fast as it gets. But, as I always say in this channel, there is the cost of uh, abstractions. Because the language is an abstraction, you simplified something, but at a cost. And that cost is you're hiding things. So, back to when I started this video, and I said, if we really knew how to write machine code, there wouldn't be any, you know, problems with performance, or this language is better than this. Why? Because, well, that is, we're gonna write the minimum number of instructions to do X. That's it, right? But languages add complexity, you know? They hide things. And some languages, of course, when you compile something to that machine code, it generates, well, it tries to do what, what 
would you give it the instructions you give it but that tend to be complex because it's a high level language you're almost talking human right and then you're trying to convert into machine code which is a very you know, simple set of instructions whether you're coding against RESC, uh, reduced instruction set, or CESC, which is the complex instruction set. But is uh, regardless, you're doing that. So now, every any language you use is going to introduce that uh, overhead. And languages and compilers, bread and butter, is to compile the best optimized code and and it solves like silly mistakes that we make in the program like defining a variable that we never use or you know doing a function that we never call or uh, you know returning early and the rest of the code that is below the return is actually never executed so we're never actually generated we don't need to generate that code to begin with because it's, not gonna, it's never going to be executed and so on we'll try to do all these optimization inlining is another example right like uh, when you call a function the concept of function doesn't really exist per se right? a function is just literally a bunch of code that lives in the text area in your process. And when you say call this function, the program counter literally jump to that location, right? You, it's, it's set to that address in memory where your function starts. That's all what it is, you know? So calling a lot of function is another abstraction which makes you jump between all these memory addresses like oh i'm going to this function which causes another function and you're finding yourself reading from different sets of memory addresses in the process uh, code or text area which causes a lot of memory accesses which are slow it comes to the cpu and that's why i see uh, uh, some cpus compile it with concept of inlining i said all right you call this function a lot in a loop and you're gonna be jumping all over and on so i'm gonna literally copy the code when i compile it in in inside that call and instead of actually jumping to the location i'll i'll duplicate the call on compilation so the thing this is what the compile compiler does uh, which is which is amazing right so we have these compiled languages and we've been using them and there are like many other compiled languages and uh, c was one of the languages that uh, you have to do your own in memory allocation and deal with. Oh, if you declare something, you have to clean it up. And in the beginning, that kind of makes sense. So, all right, this is things that you have to do. It's just right. You declared a variable or an object, you have to remove it from memory. So, part of this, let's say, uh, concreteness of the memory and the CPU is being uh, is being exposed to the user. This memory allocation, which can lead to problems, right? problems in memory management, because now you're putting the onus on the user or the developer in this case to clean up after itself, to correctly, you know, remove uh, memory. You know? To deal with all this, which, which is difficult. Then were born languages. Uh, that's why languages were born that uh, manage memory for you. So, all right, let's build another set of compiled languages that manage memory for us. Like it's called the garbage collection based languages, Java, and Go, and whatnot. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so no, you see the pattern, right? We're trying to simplify things as much as possible but then the problem comes uh, with compile languages is if i compile something that program only works for the cpu uh, that i compiled it with it will never work on another cpu so if i compile for intel it will not work on arm and if i compile in this um, 
it will not work on M, uh, Mac, M1, and so on. Or Windows, EXE, it won't work on Linux. You get the point, right? So, then another set of languages were born, which are called the interpreted languages. Uh, mainly Python and JavaScript come to mind here. And the beauty of these languages are uh, they are CPU, you know, agnostic, you know, they're not really compiled. So what you do instead, and I can, I can, you can argue that Java is actually one of these languages as well. It's not really interpret, well, it is in a sense because it is a Java, JVM, right? but JavaScript and, uh, and Python work on any. If you write a Python script, you don't compile it. Right? <laughs> as long as the Python library, not library, what's called the runtime exists, it runs. JavaScript code, if you have a node, runtime or bun or deno, it just runs, right? You still need this extra thing that's called the runtime. If you have Java, then you need this Java runtime. So, but, but, the, but it's a slightly more, you know, Portable, if you will. But the, the the hit with interpreted languages, because they are not compiled, there is this intermediate step. Right? So there is this runtime that exists that knows how to understand the code you wrote, which is the Python code. So if you I say A plus B in Python, and I run this program, it, do, it is not directly translated to a machine code a plus b no it's directly no the python runtime or the javascript runtime and this like you think of it like an interpreted language any interpreted language works the same way it looks at your code and it's not really looking at it as a string it is another level called the byte code where it looks like all right this oh you have this plus sign this plus sign is actually this code over there yeah? so there is this uh, and then the code the machine code gets executed see there is so there is like an extra step to this interpretation step where is it oh I, I see this plus sign this means this I see this declaration this means this so there is like F and then if think, think of it like this so there is the interpretation step and then the extra step is the actual execution. That's why people say interpreted languages are, are slow. And that's the reason, because you're not really executing directly, you're doing a step to interpret in order to execute, versus if it's a machine code, no, it's, it, it's ready. It, the machine code, the compiled executable is ready to be executed. It's literally loaded in memory as machine code as CPU instruction. So all we have to do is just literally pull that thing into the IR, which is the instruction register in the CPU, and then boom, the CPU executes it. Of course, that makes, that, that's why <laughs> programs have to be compiled to the CPU that you're compiling against, because you're, you're directly compiling against that. And that's why it has to work like that, okay? Versus interpreted languages, or there's this uh, this extra step that you need to essentially translate this string or this language that you have into whatever the uh, Python or runtime or the JavaScript V8 runtime knows what it is and then execute. Does that make sense? Now the final thing because I ended the video is is what is called the just-in-time compilation. Yeah. So we talked about a hidden time of compilation, which is like, hey, let's compile, get something. Then we talk about just-in-time compilation. So JavaScript and Python, I don't know if Python supports that, I don't think it does. But even Java does the concept of, because interpretation is slow, it analyzes, all right, the V8 will look at this, mm, this piece of code is, like, is, is executed a lot. So I'm going to literally take that and do a just-in-time compilation into whatever the current CPU 
instruction set is. And I'm going to put this in the heap. And it has to be in the heap because the process text is read only. You cannot just write stuff to it, right? Uh, process, if you don't know, has like many sections. There is the text, which is the code. There is the data, which is the static global data variables. There is the stack and heap, right? So heap is this, it becomes an area where you can put junk memory stuff, any allocation goes there. So the just-in-time compilation code that is compiled by the V8 or the Python or okay, nice, keep saying that, by Java or whatever the JIT compiler goes into the heap. But then the OS has to actually mark this area for security reasons. Like, okay, you can now execute from this area. Otherwise, you get uh, all sorts of, you know, that's how, you know, stack uh, buffer overflow attacks you know, happen. So normally you don't really execute code in the heap. It never happens. But that's why you have to give like a permission. All right, this area in the, in the heap is actually code. Yeah? So once you give this permission, then what you do is like, all right, all you have to do is just point the program counter to that heap and address and uh, the rest is just history you're executing native beautiful machine code so that's just in time compilation so you take a little bit of an extra hit compilation in runtime if you will but then the rest of the code becomes uh, really fast you know so that's what i wanted to talk about interpreted versus compile language i'm pretty sure i missed a lot of other other topics uh, as well here but i thought, thought i'll talk about that you guys take care